My name is Sajja Ishwar Sairanga. I am from Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh. I am studying in IIT Kanpur. Now I am going to do the exercises in probability of 12th class. So probability is a very important topic. Like we will use the probability in various various things in our day-to-day -day life. So now I will go and do the exercises in the probability chapter. So first we will go to the first exercise. So now I am going to do the exercise starting point. So we will do the problem, every problem. So first I think it will be better if I write the main formula in the which will be used in the exercise. Okay. This exercise 13.1 is mainly based on conditional probability. So, so first I'll write that formula which will be used very frequently in this topic. Okay. The main formula which we will be using in this topic is the given a event B happened, we have want to find the probability of A event to be happen. For this, there is a formula which can be written as P of A given B. We can write, we can calculate this by finding P of A intersection B divided by probability of B. So this is the con conditional probability formula to find the value of probability of event A given that probability of event B is happening. So using this formula, we will do some problems. So in the first question, given that E and F are events such that probability E is equal to 0 0.6, probability F is equal to 0 0.3, and probability of E intersection F is 0 0.2. We have to find the probability of event E given that F happened, the probability of F given E happened. So this is a direct substitution question. We can substitute the value of P of E to find the first value P of E given that F, we can substitute the P of E intersection F, which is 0 0.2. And in the down, we can substitute the probability of f. So this is a sort of easy question. So we can find similarly p of f given that e happened similarly. The second question is also similar to the first question. Here also probability of a intersection b is given, and also probability of b is given. We have to find probability a. A given that B happen. So the third question: If probability of A is equal to zero point eight, and probability of B is equal to zero point four, and probability of B given A is equal to zero point four, okay. In this question, we have to substitute the value B intersection A and probability of A. So we will get probability of A intersection B. So again, using the formula, we'll get probability of A given B happen. So the third part, probability of A intersection B. This is a general formula of, there is a general formula of finding probability of A intersection B. I am writing it. In the part I, Part one of the problem, we have found the probability of A intersection B by substituting the values. And also probability of A and probability B is given in the initial question. So by substituting the values, we will complete the this part of the problem. So we will move to the next question. In the fourth question, we, it is indirectly given about information about the probability of A and directly given the value of probability B and it is also given the 
probability of even here given b. So here also we have to find the probability of a union b. So first we have to find the probability of p a intersection b by using the values given and substituting in this formula we will get the probability of a intersection b. So the probability of a union b can after finding the probability of a intersection b yes, can be found using this formula. So the fifth question is also similar to what we have done previously. We have to first find the probability of an intersection B, then A given B, then probability of B given A. So six. So in the question six to nine, we have to prob we have to find the probability of E with E given that F. So we will find the values of this probability. So first we have to find the probability of f in this question then we have to find the probability of intersection f so after finding these values we will get our required answer okay for the sixth i the probability of f so here a coin is tossed three times and event f is that had some first two tosses so this probability is easy to find it is given that when we toss three times we have to find the probabilities that the, there will be head on the first two tosses so probability of f in the first case is that it should be a head on the first coin and it is should be a head in the second coin. So the final probability will be one by four to get both the coins as heads. And the probability of head on the third cross is one by two since head and tails both have equal probability for a fair coin. So we know the value of probability of f and we also know the probability of e we have to find the probability of e intersection f since each coin is independent of each other we can say p of e intersection f as 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 by 8. We know the event E intersection F is we should get heads on all the three coins. So the probability of getting heads on all the three coins is 1 by 8. So now our required answer will be 1 by 8 by 1 by 4 which will be 1 by 2. Okay. Now we go to the second part of the question. So here the probability of here f is given that it should be at most two heads so the first so that when a coin is tossed three times we should get at most two heads that implies number of heads should be one or zero or two it can't be three so if we find that if you write the subs sample space of all the three coins like the sample space in this case will be tails 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 right, right. so these are the all possible outcomes after tossing three times so in this we have to find the number of outcomes which are favorable for at most two heads so at most two heads we will get the, all the first seven so probability of f in this case will be seven by eight and the e intersection f gives that it should have at least two heads and at most two heads this is possible only when the heads is equal to two so 
we want to find the number of outcomes in the probability of getting h is equal to 2. So we have three cases in which a number of x is equal to 2. So the probability of E intersection F is equal to 3 by 8. So our required answer will be 3 by 7 in this case. Okay. The path 3 is E at most 2 tails and F is at least 1 tail. So similarly, you can check the number of events for variable f and e intersection f and we will get the probability of e given that f by substituting in the previous formula so we will go to the next problem so in the next problem two points are positive ones and e and f events are given so here also we will first write the sample space that is the all the possible outcomes after the to, after tossing the coins twice. So here the sample space will be here. Also, we should find the probability of F and probability of E intersection A, and finally we'll get our answer. So where the probability of one coin shows that is here. If you see it is two by four and the pro and e intersection f will become one coin should have tail and another coin should have head. Then it is also two by four. So our required answer can be formed by doing the division of these two. Here one in the F it is given that one coin shows that that implies at least I think at least one coin one coin should show head. So I think the probability of F should will be three by four then two by four. So we will do see the second part. The probability F is given that no head appears. So it is then it should be only 10 so probability of f will be 1 by 4 and please no tail appears and the intersection of f will be no head appears and no tails appear which is not possible because if anything should have one of heads or tails so every outcome will have one of heads or tails without heads or tails it is not possible to, to have an outcome so it will be zero by four and the overall probability will be zero in the next question it is given that a die is turned three times so the die every outcome has six possible or every toss will have six possible outcomes and it will be numbers one two three four five six in every outcome so yes it is given that six comma five appears on first two tosses so first we have to find the probability so that six appear on the first toss and five appear on the second toss so for the pro so the probability for six to appear on the first toss is one by six and the probability of five to appear on the second is one by six so e is given on that four appears on the third toss so e intersection f implies that six appear on the first one fifth appear on the second one and four appear on the third one so the probability for e intersection is equal to one by six for sixth on first one into one by six for fifth on second one and into one by six for four on the third toss so we have found the p of f and p intersection f we can find the value of p 
of E given F by substituting in this form the form of the normal condition probability to so the next question. And mother, father, and son line up in a random for a family picture. Okay. So first we will write the possible sample space so that the son, father, and mother are in the line. So it can be like father, mother, son, father, son, mother, or mother, father, son, or mother, son, father. Our son, father, and mother. Our son, mother, father. This is the possible sequence such that all of the three are standing in the line. So, given that F is that father in middle, so father in middle, there are two cases in such that father is in the middle, and the probability will be 2 by 6. For the event F, so E given that son on one and father on middle. So the probability of E intersection is such that father is in the middle and son is in the end. In both the cases where the father is in the middle, the son is, is at one of the end. So probability of intersection is two by six, and probability of t e, given that f is one in this case. Since in both the cases of here the sun is at other end, so it is a sure event since the probability is one. So we will go to the next problem. This problem a black and a red dice are rolled. Find the conditional probability of obtaining a sum greater than nine given that black die result. So, in this question, it is given that black die resulted in E P. The let, let us define the event B as that black die result in the final. So let A be the outcome of the red type. We know A plus B should be greater than equal to 9. And it is given that B should be, B is 9, sorry, B is 5. So that implies A plus B as B is equal to so, my is greater than that. That implies A should be greater than four. So, A have possible outcomes five or six. So, the probability of A having five and six is two by six. And into the probability of B is 4 is 1 by 6 divided by the probability of the black dice having number 4 is 1 by 6. So we get the required probability as 1 by 3. And, this part. and in the second part, it is given that the red die resulted in a number less than four. In the second part, the probability of red die is resulted. Okay. Here in this case, we know that A plus B is equal to eight and 
a is less than four. Okay. So the probability of a such that it is less than four, it will be one three by six as one comma two comma three are less than four. So the probability of a is three by six. And the probability such that the A is less than 4 and B is and the sum of A plus B is equal to 8. We, we should do this by cases. So since A is less than 4, B can be B can be like if we take A is equal to 3, then the value of B should be 5. And if we take A is equal to then the value of b will be should be 6 and if we take the value of a as 1 the value of b should be 7 this case is not possible since a die will have the values only from 1 to 6 so these are the only possible outcomes so the probability of this will be 1 by 6 into 1 by 6 the probability when the a is 2 is 1 by 6 into 1 by 6 so after finding this value we get the value as 1 by 18 by 1 by 2 this is equal to 1 by 9 so 1 by 9 is the requirement so for this problem Okay, now we will move to the next question. So, in the 11th question, if a die is equal, consider events k is equal to 1, 3, 5, f is equal to 2, 3, z is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So, first we will find the probability of probability of the probability of f and probability of g these are easy to find since e and f are finite sets so to find up so for the first part we have to find the probability of e given f this can be find found by calculating probability of e intersection f and probability of f probability of f can be found since f should have value of 2 by 3 2 and 3 probability of f is equal to 3 by 6 and probability of g is equal to 4 by 6 and probability of g is equal to 3 by 6 so this problem is similar to the one problems which you have done in the first part of the exercise we have to find the probabilities of one each value and we have to substitute in the formula to get the values of p given f and the part one and two are similar to each other and also the third part is also similar here also we have to find the probability of events e union here and e intersection here this you can do by finding the union of the E and F and intersection of the set E and F. So now the next question. Assume that each child is equally like to be a boy or girl. If a family has two children, what is the conditional probability that both girls are both are girls given that okay? So in the question given so a family has two girls we have to find a conditional probability so let he be the event of having two girls in the family and if we the in the part one f will be youngest girl is youngest is a girl so the younger one is a girl now we have to find the conditional probability of this question. 
So the probability, let's find the probability of f. The probability of younger girl to be a girl is one by two. Since the younger one can be a boy or a girl. And the probability of both the girls are both the children are girls given that the younger girl is a girl it is 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 this is the probability for both girls both children are girls given that younger child is there so to find a conditional probability it will be 1 by 4 by 1 by 2 which will be half in the second part it is f is such that at least one is a gun so we write the sample space for this so both the children can be boys boys or one of the list or one boy born them or both of them are friends. So the probability that at least one is a girl is three by four. And the probability such that both of the girls, both of the children to be girls is again one by four, since it is the only possible outcome. So the probability here will be one by four divided by three by four, which will be one by three. Okay, next next question it is given that an instructor has a question bank consisting of 300 questions of easy, true or false, 200 questions of true or false type and difficult, 500 easy multiple choice and 400 difficult multiple choice. If a question is selected at random from the question bank, what is the probability that it will be an easy question given that it is a multiple question okay so first we will define events so let us define a b a, b. a is a event of getting a easy question and b is a event of getting a multiple choice question so we need to find the value of probability of easy question given that it is a multiple choice question probability of so using the formula first we have to find the value of probability of a intersection b so the probability of a question such that it is an easy question and it is a multiple choice question. This will be equal to five hundred the total number of questions of MCQs will be fourteen push fourteen hundred. And the probability of MCQs questions is 900 by 1400. So we'll get the conditional probability as far by then after substituting in the problem. Now we'll do the 14 question. Given that the two numbers appearing on throwing dice are different, find the probability of event such that the sum of numbers is four. So we have, when we throw two dice, we will have a sample space of 36 or two. Like the first case, the first dice can be one, or first dice can be two, or second dice, or first dice can be four, or five, or six. And second dice can be one or second dice can be two so first we fill the sample space for the event 
it is important to have the information about the sample space for every, for every experiment we do. So I think this will do enough information about the question. First we have, so we have, we have to find the probability such that two numbers are different. So we have 36 outcomes possible for when we toss two dice. In the 36 outcome, there are only six outcomes in which the numbers are equal, which are 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6. So the probability of getting two different numbers will be here 30 by 36, which is 5 by 6. And the probability of, so let's see the events in which the sum of spot. So if we see diagonally, the sum here is two, here is three. And these are the outcomes which are required for us. So we have one, three, or two, two, or three, one, in which the sum will be four. So the probability such that we have two different numbers and sum of the numbers is is equal to four we have this we want to be counted as we know that the numbers are different so the probability of this will be two by 36 so the conditional probability can be formed by dividing the both we'll get our answer as one by 15 in this case Okay, now we'll go to the next question. Consider the experiment of throwing a dice. In. Okay, multiple of three comes, throw the dice again. If any other number comes, toss a coin. And the condition of probability of the given the coin shows a type given that at least one die shows up three. Okay. So first, in this question, we will write the sample space. When we toss a time, it, the outcome can be any of the numbers 1 to 6. So in this case, if the outcome is 3 or 6, we will we have to toss a die again. So we will get another as yes. we have to we will get another outcomes as 1 to 6. And if we, initially, if we don't get a multiple of three, we'll just have to toss a coin and we'll have the values of true. So, tail or head. So, assume key be the event of getting the coin as a tail, and F be the event of in which at least one die shows a three. Right. So, so the first time when we when we throw a dice, the the probability of getting a three will be one by six. And also, if we there is a small chance that the first time when we throw a dice, it will show up six. And again, if we throw it, it may show up three. So the probability for that case is one by six into one by six. So now we, if we want to find the intersection T e and F such that the F is that at least one die shows a three. So if one of the die, if the die shows three, we'll toss again and we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. And we, in this case, we don't toss a coin since it is not one to five. So in this case, the intersection of the probability will be zero. And if we toss, if we, in the F, if we get six the first time and third, three the next time, in this case also, we are all not 
tossing the coin. So in this case, also the probability will be zero. So the probability of the intersection F is zero, and we will also get the conditional probability zero. This question. So in the next question, this is a multiple choice question. The probability of A is given as one by two. The probability of B is given as zero. We have to find a probability of A given B. So if we write the formula for A given B, it will be probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. But here we are didn't have the value of A intersection B and probability of B is given as zero. So it will be something by zero, which is not given. So the answer will be C in this case. And next question. If A and B are events, such that probability of A by B is equal to probability of B by A. So it is the number probability of A by B, which is equal to B of A intersection B by A. This is given equal to P of A intersection B. So from the option CPC, we can say P of A is equal to P of B. Or we can either say A if P of A intersection B is equal to zero. Then also we will get zero is equal to zero. Or if P of A is equal to B, then also we'll get the same. So I think the answer will be C and D both. Since nothing, no information is given about that. No extra information is given about the A events, we can say both the options can be done. Okay. So next in the chapter, it is the multiplication rule of probability is discussed and also the independent events are discussed. And, and some examples are also given. So next we will solve the exercise starting from here. So before solving the exercise, I would like to write the important formulas which are which can be easy to so it can be noted that if A and B are independent events, we can write this is possible only when P of A intersection B is equal to this is the necessary condition for both for events A to B, A and B to be independent of each other. So we'll do the problem. The first question P of A is given as 3 by 5 and P of B is given as 1 by 5. We have to find the probability of intersection B, P and B are independent. This is a direct formula. We can simply multiply both of them and we will get the answer. In second question, two cards are drawn at random and without displacement from the type of 52 playing cards, find the probability that both are black. So, first card. So we have drawn two cards and without replacing. So we are not replacing what the card we are who we have drawn. So let A be the outcome of first card and B be the outcome of second card. So the probability of A such that first card is blank is since in a deck of cards there are 52 cards and half of them are black the probability of me will be 26 by 52 so after taking out a card from this there there will be 25 cards with black cards left and 
the total number of cards will be 51. So the probability of B of A intersection B will be the product of these two. So after multiplying these two, we will get our required answer. So we we'll move to the next question. A box of oranges is inspected by examining three randomly selected oranges down drawn without replacement. If all of the three are good, then box is approved first. Otherwise, it is rejected by the probability. A box containing 15 oranges out of which 12 are good and 3 are bad. So we have to find the probability such that all the three oranges are good. This can be done as previous case. So first the probability of getting the first orange as a good one is 1 by 15. Since we are not replacing, the number of good oranges will be reduced to 11. So the probability of drawing a second orange as good will be 11 by 4. And the next one will be 10 by 13. So this is the probability such that the first three picks are good ones and if the if the oranges are approved were same then the all these oranges should be good so the required probability is simply the product of this and by calculating this we will get the answer as 44 by 90 after cancelling corner terms and rearranging So that we'll go to the next question. A fair coin and 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 by assume die or tossing at A B the event head appears on that coin and B the event three on that die. Check whether A and B are independent events or not. Okay. So to find independent events, we have to find a probability. Of A yeah, first, the probability of B first. Next, and we have to find probability of A intersection B, and we have to compute probability of A whether A intersection B is equal to probability of A into probability of B. So first, if you see about probability of A. So the head appears on the coin. The probability of head appears of a coin is one by two. B in the event of three ordered die. So this will be one by six. The probability of A in the second test will be one by two into one by six. So in this case, we can say that probability of the intersection B is equal to, we'll get the value of same in this case. So in these questions, first you have to find the probability of A, and next you have to find the probability of B, and next you have to find the value of probability of the intersection B, and you have to equate them whether they are equal or so. The next question, a die marker 1, 2, 3 in red and 4, 5, 6 in three is tossing that A be the number is even and B be the number is red or A and B even. So similarly, we have to find probability A first and probability B next and probability of A intersection. So if we get this term as a valid term, then we can say that the probability the, the events A and B are independent. 
else the values as the events are not deleted. So the next question, like E and F be events, probability E equal to three by four, probability F is equal to three by two, and probability of E intersection F is equal to one by five, are E and F given. This simply we can say that here the values are directly given, simply we have to multiply them and check whether it is equal to the value P of A intersection with B. So we move to the next question. Given A and B are system probability of 1 by 2, probability of A only in B is equal to 3 by 4. No. P of B is equal to P. Find P if they are given. Mutually exclude. So the events A and B are mutually exclusion if we have the value of P of A intersection B as zero, then we can say A and B are mutually exclusion. Similarly, so for finding whether the events are independent, we should check the above condition P of B intersection B is equal to P of C into P. So we can substitute the values and find the value of P if they are mutually exclusive. Also, given P of A union B, we can use this value to find the probability of A intersection B and equal it to zero, then again we will get the value of probability of B. So we move to the next question. Let A and B be independent events with P of A is equal to 0 0.3 and P of B is equal to 0 0.4. Find A intersection B. This is simply the product of A and B and P of A union B. This can be found by using the general formula. P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. Next, the conditional probability can be used by can be calculated by using the direct formula. So, next question: If A and B are two events such that probability of A is equal to one by four and probability B is equal to one by two. And probability of A intersection B is equal to 1 by 8. Find P, not A, and not B. So we have to find the value of probability of not A and not B. So this can be found, this can be rewritten as probability A and B. This can be calculated. This is equal to probability of 1 minus. Okay, the probability of A union B can be found by the formula P of A plus P of probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. The values are given in the formula. So by substituting the values, we can find the value of probability of the required probability here. So we can we can see the next problem. Events A and B are such that probability of A is equal to one by two, probability B is equal to sum of them, and probability of not A or not B is equal to one by four. Check whether A and B are independent. So first we have to find the value of probability of A intersection B. And we are given the probability of not A or not B. So first we will write this as probability of A and B over and this is equal to probability of A intersection B. Okay. So first we can find probability of A intersection B by substituting probability of not A or not B. 
then we will check whether the A and B are independent by verifying the value of T of A intersect will be is equal to product of probability of the property to B. So next we will go to the next problem given two independent events A and B such that property of A is equal to 0 0.3 and property B is equal to 0 0.6. We have to find probability of A and B. This is simply equal to the product of probability A and probability B. And probability of A and not B. This is the probability of A into probability of not B, which would be 0 0.3 into 1 minus 0 0.6 is equal to 0 0.12. In the third part, we can use the value we have found out in the part one of the problem. Then we can substitute and we will get the value of probability of ARB. In the fourth part, we will get neither A nor B, which is similar to not B and not, not A and not B. This is also done. A similar problem is also done previously. So we can follow the same. So we will move to the next question. A dice is tossed twice. Find the probability of getting an odd number at least once. So we have done questions like this previously by writing all the samples first. But if you want to write samples first for this, there are the pro total number of pro outcomes is nearly 260. You cannot write all those. So we have to find a better method than writing all the sample space and then checking in which the number of all numbers are at least one. So we can write our required probability of getting at least one or as one minus p of a complement here a complement will have the will be said as probability of getting odd number zero times because that is the complement of getting at least once so a probability of getting odd number zero times can be found as product of getting even numbers thrice. So this will be equal to one minus probability of getting even number thrice as one by two into one by two into one by two is equal to seven by one. So this method of finding the complement of the required property and subtracting minus one will be useful somehow as we cannot always write the complete sample space and then tick the outcomes which are favorable and do through the thing like number of favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes. This is not always perfect. So sometimes it is but depends. Calculate the required value by finding the complement of the given event and doing one minus will give our final answer. So we will go to the next question. Two balls are drawn at random with replacement from a box containing 10 black and eight red balls. Find the probability that both balls are red. Since it is given that two balls are drawn at random, we can say that both are independent events. Like if you draw a black ball and if you place it, the total number of black balls initially will be same as the half after the experiment. So we can say that drawing the first ball and drawing the second ball are independent events. So if you know them 
those are independent events you can say you can easily calculate the probabilities so first one probability of both balls are red that implies probability of first ball is equal to red into probability of second ball into red the second part of the question will be will can be calculated as probability of first black first ball into is black into probability of second ball is red the third the third question is one of them is black and other is red so this can be calculated as sum of probability of first ball is equal to black and second ball is equal to red and probability of first ball is equal to red and second is black so this will be our required answer for this 13th question yeah, the 14th question the probability of solving specific problem independently by A and B are 1 by 2 and 3, 1 by 3 respectively. If both try to solve the problem independently by the probability that the problem is solved, exactly one of them. So first we have to define the events and we have to finalize what we have to find. It is given that let us define the event A as the probability of person A solving the question, which is, is equal to 1 by 2. And let us define the event B as probability of B solving the question. And this is equal to 1 by 3. If both try to solve the problem independently, find the probability of such that problem is solved. So the problem will be is solved when either A have done the problem or B have done the problem. So for in this case, we have to find the probability of A, B, and B. As if either of the A or B solve the problem, we can say that the problem is solved. So this can be found by using the values P of A and P of B. And P, A intersection on B can be, since it is given that both solve independently, we can say probability of A intersection B as product of probability A and probability B, and this is equal to one by C. So the first part can be formed by substituting the values given. Second one, exactly one of them solve the problem. So this, so exactly one of, so first we let, this can be found by some of the, these two problems. Like first, only A have solved the question, less probability of only B have solved the question. This can be found easily since a and b are inter independent events we can write probability of a intersection and not p as probability a into probability of not b and similarly we can find this value and substitute the value to get the current answer so next question one card is drawn at a random from a well shuffled deck of 52 cards. In each of the following cases are the events E and F independent. So we have done similar problems ever. We have to just check whether two events are independent or not. This can be found using B of E intersection by finding the value of probability of the intersection and if it is if it is equal to the product of probability and probability B, then we can say both are independent events so if you first find the probability of e and f is in the every case then we find we find the value of probability of e intersection then you can easily determine which of the events are independent on. So we move to the next question. In a hostel, 60% of the students read Hindi newspaper, 40% read 
इंडिशमेंट्स टाइप है एंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट की ग्रोथ इंडियन इंडिशमेंट्स टाइप है ए स्टूडेंट इज सेलेक्टेड एट रैंडम बाय द प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट शी रीड्स नाइडर इन द नॉट इंग्लिश मिस टाइप है फर्स्ट वी डिफाइन द इवेंट्स सीरो पॉइंट The first question we have to say the probability of neither Hindi nor English. This can be solved by first finding its complement value. The complement of neither Hindi nor nor English is both is Hindi or English. So probability of Hindi Union English can be found by using the values given here and the formula of Hindi Union English is probability of Hindi plus probability of English minus probability of Hindi intersection English. So by using the values given, we can find the value of probability of Hindi Union. English when you can do it one minus two get the required answer. So the part B is if he if the Hindi if she reads Hindi newspaper find the probability that she reads Hindi newspaper. So this is the conditional probability. So we have to find the value of if she read Hindi. Sorry, she read English newspaper given that she read Hindi newspaper. This can be found by the using the conditional probability formula and you will get the answer for the part B. And part B is also similar question. You have to find the probability of Hindi given that she read Hindi. So we go to the next question. The probability of obtaining the even prime number on each day when a pair of days is two. So the only even prime number is two. So we have to find the probability of getting two twice. This can be simply calculated. So the probability of getting two on the first day is one by six. The second day is also one by six. So the answer would be one by thirty-six in this case. So the next question: Two events A and B are will be independent. Two events A and B will be independent if P of if P of A intersection B is equal to P of A to P of B. So if you see the options, the first one is A and B are mutually exclusive. This may not be always correct since if A and B are mutually exclusive, the, the product P of the value of P intersection B will be zero, which may not be equal to P of A into B. And the second term P of A not A intersection. I think the symbol is missing there. If we consider it as intersection, then I think we may get the correct value. Part C is probability of A is equal to probability of B. This is also not correct. The probability of B here plus probability of B is equal to this is also not correct. So we will simplify the second option and check whether our condition is satisfying or not. If we see one minus probability of B, if we rearrange the if we expand it, we will get us probability of one minus C. Minus P of plus P of A to P of B. This can be also written as one minus probability of A union B. 
equal to one minus p of a minus p of b. Plus P of A with P of B. And if we expand this term P of A intersection of P of A union, we'll get P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection. So if we do that, I think we'll get the P of A. The intersection this is the required condition for the A and B to be independent. So this will be the answer. So the exercise 13.2 is completed. Now we move to the next exercise. So here, A theorem is same, and theorem is total theorem of total probability also. So we can write A theorem as simply probability of zero. We can case to probability Property of EJ to point here, EJ. This is the base theorem for now. We are going to use to solve the next exercise. So, the next exercise. Okay. Now we will do the exercise writing for three. The first question. A moon contains five red and five black balls. A ball is drawn at random. Its color is noted and is written to the pin. Moreover, two additional balls of the color brown are put in the room and then a ball is drawn at random. That is the probability that the second ball is random. Sorry, second ball is red. So we have to do this in the total probability theorem. The total probability theorem says that Probability of event A is equal to sigma of J is equal to one from the probability of EJ. Probability of A. Where easier is can be said as very easier exclusive events very every of the E and they are actually exclusive. So, We have to find the probability of second ball is done. So it can be let's suppose we define for EI as the events as 
event is the event of picking a first ball as a red ball and e2 be the event of picking the first ball as a black ball so property of e1 and e2 are both half so the half even chase half to property of a even even so the probability of picking second ball of s red and the probable where the it is given that the first ball is red so if the first ball is red then in the next time we will add two more red balls so the prop the total number of red balls will be seven in this case and in the next case, if the first ball taken is black, we can say the number of red balls will be what we changed and it will be five only. So if we calculate this, we will get seven plus five by twenty-four, twelve by twenty-four half. So this is the required answer for the first question. So the second question. The ball contains four red balls and four black balls. Another bag contains two red and six black. One of the bags is selected at random day and a ball is drawn from the bag which is found to be red. Find the probability that the ball is drawn from the first bag. So, Okay, let us define A be the event of drawing the ball as red and even be the event of drawing a ball from the first bag, E2 be the event of drawing the ball from second bag. So we have to find the value of, of probability of picking the back first back given that the ball is red. So this is the required probability. So this can be formed by using the base theorem. This can be written as probability of E1 into probability here given that E1 divided by probability of E1 into probability of A given E1 plus probability of E2. The probability of A given T2. So the probability of E1 will be half and the probability of E2 will be half. The probability of A even even is since even has four red balls and four black balls, the probability of picking a red ball will be so if we have the values here, so it will be half into probability of the ball is red when it is picked from the back one, it will be four by eight. And the denominator half into four by eight. Plus the probability of picking second bank it is half and probability of the ball is red in the second bank is two by eight since the number of red balls are two and the total number of balls are eight.
by simplifying this, we will get the answer as 2 by 3. This is the required answer. So we will go to the next question. Of the students in a college, it is known that 60% reside in hostel and 40% are day scholars. Previous year results report that 30% of all students who reside in hostel attain A grade and 20% of day scholars attain A grade in their annual examination. At the end of year, one student is chosen at random from the college and he has an A grade. What is the probability that a student is a hostler? So here also we will define the event. Let A be the event in which the student got A grade. And let even be the event such that student is a hostler and E to be a event such that student is a day scholar. So we have to find the probability that the student is a hostler given that the student attained a grade. So we have to find this probability given the probability of human is equal to 0 0.6. The probability of E to be equal to 0 0.4. So we have to find the value of probability of even given here. This we have to, we can use base theorem as before and we can write this is equal to probability of E1 to probability of A given E1 divided by probability of E2 The probability of even e one plus probability of two is the probability of a given the probability of a given e one or probability of a given e two are given in the question. So if we substitute the value, we will get this is 0 0.6 into 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.6 into 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4 into 0 0.3. So if we calculate it, we get the answer. So we will move to the next question. In the answer, in answering a question on a multiple choice question, the student either knows the answer or guesses. Let three by four be the probability of student knowing the answer, and one by four be the probability he guesses. Assume that the student who guesses on the answer will be correct with one by four. What is the probability that the student knows the answer given that he answered it correctly? So here also we will first define the events. Let A be the event of the student answering with correct. And E1 be the event such that student answer by guessing and we do be the event of student answer by knowing the answer. So here we have to find the probability that a student knows the answer and given that the answer is correct. So we have to find the value probability of e2 given here. This can be this can be done by base theorem. 
we have to find the values of probability a given given probability of a given a2 if you find these values you can substitute in the base theorem and you can get the required answer so these values is given that the probability the probability of question to be correct when he guesses is 1 by 4 and the probability of the question to be correct when he knows the answer is 1 because if you know the answer the answer is correct is the correct one so by substituting the values he in the base theorem, we will get the required probability. So, we will move to the next question. A laboratory blood test is 99% effective in detecting a certain, certain disease when it is in fact present. However, the test also yields a false positive results for 0.5 percent of the healthy person tested that is if a healthy person is tested then with probability of 0 0.005 the test will imply he has the disease if 0.1 percent of the population actually has the disease what is the probability that a person has the disease given that his result is positive so we will first define the prop A as the event such that the test is positive. Event as the event such that the person has a disease and it to be the event the person does not have the disease. So we have to find the probability such that person has the disease given that this test result is positive. So we have to find the value of probability of P1 given K. So this can be solved by the this can be solved by substituting the values in the base theorem so if you see the probability of even is given like it is the probability of the total person having the disease it is given as 0.1 percent of the population has the disease so the probability of even will be 0. 0, 0, 001 and probability of e2 is it is the complement of prob probability of e1 that is equal to zero point nine 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 and it is also given that probability of the test to the post to given E1 as 99%. So this is, is equal to 0 0.99. And also the probability the test is post to even though the person doesn't have disease, it is given as. Zero point zero zero five. So by substituting these values in the base theorem, we will get the right answer. So we move to the next question. There are three coins. One is two-headed, having head on both faces. Another is a bias coin that comes up at south side personality. The third is a bias coin. One of the three coins is chosen at random, but it shows that what is the property that is two headed one. 
So this is another question on base theorem. So similarly, we define the events that A be the event of getting head, even be the first point, E2 be the second point, E3 be the third point. So, so we have to find the probability of even given A. So using the base theorem, we can find the probability in this question. It is a simple question. Okay, we will do the next question now. So the next question, an insurance company insured 2,000 scooter drivers, 4,000 car drivers, and 6,000 truck drivers. The probability of an accident is 0.01 and 0.3 and 0.15 respectively. One of the insured persons meets with an accident, what is the probability that he is a scooty driver? So again, this is a sort of previous question. We can define A as an event of having accident and even be the event that he is a scooty driver, E2 be an event of car driver and E3 be an event of truck driver. We have to find the probability such that a scooty driver is give, have been met with an accident. This is similar to the value of the e probability of even given that he has an accident. Yeah. So using the base theorem and substituting the values, so we will get the answer. So let's substitute the values this can be written as probability of even into probability of accident by e1 divided by probability of even the probability of A by E1 plus probability of E2 into probability of A given E2 Plus probability of E3 into probability of A given E3 so the value of probability of A given E1, E2, E3 are given in the problem as as 0 0.01 and 0 0.03 and 0 0.15 respectively. So if we substitute the values, we'll get the required answer. So we'll move to the next question. A factory has two machines C and B. Past record shows that machine A produced 60% of the items of output and machine B produced 40% of the time. Furthermore, 2% of the items produced by machine A and 1% produced by machine B were detected. All the items are put into one stockpile and then one item is chosen at random from this and is found to be defective. What is the probability that it is produced by machine B? So, we'll start the problem by defining the event. That A be the event such that the product is defective, and even be the event such that 
the product came from the machine A and E to be the event such that product, a product came from machine B. So we have to find the value of probability so the machine it is produced by machine B given that it is defective. So this can be solved by substituting the values in the base theorem as we done some problems initially in this exercise. So after substituting the values in the equation, we'll get our final answer. So we'll move to the next question. Two groups are competition competing for the position on the board of directors of a corporation. The probability is that the first and the second groups will win are 0.6 and 0.4 respectively. Furthermore, if first group win, the probability of introducing a new product is 0.7 and the corresponding probability is 0.3 if the second group wins. Find the probability that the new product introduced by is by the second group. So, so we will define events similarly that A be the probability of new product introduced and and even be the event of event of first group has, has won and E2 be the event of second group has won. So we have to find the event that the second group has won and introduced a given that a product is introduced. So this is also similar to the previous problem. We have to use the base theorem and substitute the values which are given in the question. So after substituting values, we will get the answer. So we will move to the next question. The third question, suppose a girl throws a die, if she gets a five or six, she tosses a coin three times and notes the number of heads. If she gets one, two, three, four, she tosses a coin once and notes whether a head or tail is obtained. If she obtained exactly one head, what is the probability such that she threw one, two, three, four with that? Okay, let it. So, here also we will define the event. Let A be the event such that she got exactly one head and even be the event if she got five or six when she threw a die and it will be in an event she got one, two, three, four. So we have to find the probability of E2 given she got one head. So in this question, the value of, so we, if we want to use base theorem, we should know the value of probability of A E1 and probability of A, e, A given E2. So the probability of A given E2 is if she got one, one, two, three, four, she will do, she will toss a coin only once and the probability of getting a head while tossing a coin only once is one by two. And in if even in even she tosses the coin eight times, but no, she causes a coin three times and probability of getting only one head, it will be equal to three by eight. This is obtained by writing the sample space. So if we write a sample space, there will be eight outcomes and only one tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail. head tail tail these are the only three outcomes which are favorable for getting only one head so this will be equal to three by eight 
So by substituting the values in the base zero, we will get our required probability, probability of e2 given a. So we move to the next question. The manufacturer has three machine operators, A, B, C, the first operator. A produces 1% defect, where the second produces 5% and third produces 7%. A is on job for 50% of the time, B is on the job for 30% of the time, and C is on the job for 20%. A defective item is produced, what is the probability that it is produced by A? So this question is similar to this seventh and seventh question. So we can directly use the base theorem and substitute the values, and we will get our required answer. So we move to the next question, the third question. A card from a pack of 52 cards is lost from the remaining cards of the pack. Two cards are drawn and are found to be both diamonds. Find the probability of the card, lost card being a diamond. Okay. Okay. First, we'll define. Let we define for a be the event of a card lost and even be a event of such that the drawn card is diamond and e to be a event such that the drawn card is not a diamond so we have to find the probability such that the card is diamond given that a card is lost so we have to find the probability of first probability of a given e1 and probability of a given e2 so after finding this we can directly use the base the formula to find this so let's find these values so the probability of getting to the probability of getting two cards as diamond when a diamond is already lost so so the total number of diamonds will be one and we have to pick two diamonds out of it and the total number of cards are 51 and we have to pick two cards of them and the probability of a e2 will be all if we the lost card is in a diamond there will be 13 c2 ways to pick two diamond cards but the total number of cards will be 51 and the total number of ways will be 51 c2 so if we use this and substitute in the question we'll get our answer so we move to the next question the probability that a speaks true is 4 by 5 a coin is tossed a reports that a head appears. The probability that he actually that actually there was a head is okay. So in this question also we'll first define events. So that let A be the event of having a heads and even be a, the event such that the person is telling truth and E2 is the event such that the person is not telling the truth. So we have to find the probability of such that the person is telling the truth given that there is a head. So it is given that probability of E1 is equal to 4 by 5. 
which implies probability of E2 is 1 by 5. And probability of getting a head is equal to. So here, if we see the probability of getting a head, given that E1 is lying, is equal to the probability of getting a head. Giving that yeah, the person is lying is both equal to one by two because it doesn't depend whether the person is lying or not. As the coin is fair coin, you can say the probability of getting the head is one by two in both the cases. So if we substitute the values here, we will get our required answer. So we move to the next question. If A and B are two events such that A is subset of B and probability B not equal to zero, then which of the following is correct? So the probability of A given B can be found by the formula probability of A intersection B by probability of B. In the question it is given that A is subset of B. This implies that probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of B. Sorry, probability of A. So the required probability will be P of A by B. And this is greater than P of A since P of B is a fraction. And if you multi, if you divide anything by the fraction, the number increases. So this is greater than P of A. Okay. There is also probability that P of B is equal to one. So the correct option will be C for this question. So next we will do the, the miscellaneous exer exercise. So this has some 13 problems we can do this. Okay, the first question. A, given that A and B are two events such that probability of A not equal to zero, find P or P, P B given A. So we can do this question by using the conditional probability formula. The first question it is given that A is a subset of P. As the last question, we can say that probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A. So, probability of the intersection is equal to probability of A for the first part of the question. And probability of B given A is equal to probability of A intersection B and probability of A. Since the numerator and denominator are same, we will get the answer as one. In the second part, it is given that A intersection B is equal to mu. So we will get this value as zero in the second part, and we will get the answer as zero in the second part. So now we will do the second question. The couple has two children. Find the probability that both children are male if it is known that at least one of the children is male. Okay, this is again a conditional probability question. So the probability such that both children are male can be 
written as 1 by 4 and probability such that at least one of them is male can be written as 3 by 4. This can be checked manually by looking at the outcome. So the overall sample space for the experiment is boy girl and girl, both are girls both are boys so the number of viral outcomes for at least one boy is three so that's why we have the denominator as three by four so the answer will be one by three for this question the next question the probability that both children are female if it is known that the elder children is female so it is a similar question the numerators will be same as the probability for both boys and both girls are same and uh, in a denominator the probability that the elder child is female it is one by two since the probability of such that the elder child is a boy and elder child is a girl is same so for this question we will get the answer as one by two so let's do the next question suppose five percent of men and zero point two percent of women have gray hair a gray haired person is selected at random what is the probability of this person being male assume that the equal number of males and females okay so let a be the event of having gray hair even be the event of a male being selected it will be an event of women being selected it is given that the number of male and female are same so even and e2 have same probability and we have to find the probability of even given that the person has gray head so this can be used solved by using the base theorem and substituting the values so next question suppose that 90 percent are right-handed what is the property that at most six of a random people of a 10 people are right-handed okay so it is given that the, there should be at most six people so it can be zero people one people two people three people four people five people having with who are right-handed so the probability of zero people being right-handed is This can be found as okay. The probability of having zero people as right handed is equal to ten C zero into one by ten into. 10 plus the probability of having only one person right handed is 10 c1 into 9 by 10 power 1 into 1 by 10 power 9 and similarly the probability of two person having right only two percent of top ten percent as right handed is equal to ten c two nine by ten power two by one by ten 
power eight. So we have to add the values and we'll get our required answer. So the next question, if a leap year is selected at random, what is the chance that it will contain 58 choose tests? Okay. So first we will discuss about the leap year. So a leap year has 366 days, which means 52 weeks and two days. So, so there will be 52 Sundays, 52 Mondays, 52 Tuesdays and 52 and so on, 52 sun, Sundays in every leap year. But the two days can be anything. So if the two, the two days can be Monday, Tuesday or Tuesday, Wednesday or Wednesday, Thursday. or Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday, or Sunday, Monday. So given that the year has 53 Tuesdays, so the only favorable outcomes for the remaining two days are Monday, Tuesday, or Tuesday, Wednesday. So the probability will be two by seven for a leap year to have 53 Tuesdays. So next we will do, do the next question. Suppose we have four boxes C, A, B, C, D containing colored marbles as to the, okay, we have one red ball, six white ball and three black ball one of the boxes has been selected and random and a single marble is drawn from it if the marble is red what is the probability it is given drawn from box a box b box C. okay this is a plain base theorem question so let us define the events. So let's define A be the event of having a red marble and E1, E2, E3, E4 be the events of drawing a marble from back a, B, C, D respectively. So first we have to find the probability of probability of even even A to find the probability such that red ball is drawn from B A. So for the second part we have to find probability of E2 by A and third part we have to find probability of E3 by A. So by substituting in the base theorem, we can find these values required. So this is a easy question. So we move to the next question. Assume that the chances of a patient having heart attack is 40%. It is also assumed that a medication and a yoga course reduce the risk of heart percent by 30 percent and prescription of a certain drug reduces his chance by 25 percent at a time the patient can choose only one of the following two options with equal probabilities it is given that after going through one of the two options the patient selected at random suffers a heart attack Find the probability that the patient followed a course of meditation and yoga. So this is a, again a question on related to Bayes theorem. 
So again, we define events. Let A be the event of a person having heart attack. And even be the event of person following meditation and yoga. And E2 be the event of person following yoga. So we we should find the probability such that the person preferred yoga and meditation and have a heart attack. So to find this, we we should find the following probability of heart attack given that E1 and probability of yeah. Given that e two. So it is given that the probability of heart attack will be reduced by 30%. So every person has a initial probability of 0 0.4. So after following yoga and meditation, the probability will be reduced by 30%. So this will be equal to into 0 0.7. Similarly, here the probability is 0 0.4 for a patient to get heart attack and it is multiplied by 0 0.75 as the risk is reduced by 25%. So we will got the probability of A given E1 and probability of A given E2. So now by substituting in the base zero, we will get our final answer. So we move to the next question. If each element of a second order determinant is either 0 or 1, what is the probability that the value of determinant is positive? Assume that the individual ent entries of the determinant are chosen independently, each value we assume being assumed with probability half second order determinant. Okay. So let's look at the matrix of a second order matrix. So this is a second order matrix. Given that each of A, B, C, D are independently chosen as 0 or 1 with probability half. We have to find the probability such that value of determinant is positive. So we should get value of AD minus BC as positive. So this is only possible when AD is equal to 1. and bc is equal to four, 0. There is no other way such that the determinant is positive. So the possible values will be so for ad is equal to 1, value of a should be 1, value of b should be 1 and for bc to be 0, b equal to 0 C equal to 1 or B equal to 0, C equal to 0 or B is equal to 1, C equal to 0. So the probability such that A and B has only one choice. The probability that A equal to B 1 is half the probability of d is equal to 1 is equal to half and probability of bc is equal to 0 so it is 3 by 4 as it covers the three probabilities 0 1 0 0 1 0 excluding 0 0 sorry excluding 1 1 which will make the bc value equal to 1 
So this is our required probability. This is equal to 3 by 16. Okay, so now we move to the next problem. An electronic assembly consists of two subsystems A and B. From previous testing procedures, the following problems are assumed to be known. Probability of A fails 0 0.2. Probability of B fails alone 0 0.15. Probability of A and B fail is equal to 0 0.15. Okay. So in the question, it is given that probability of A fails. Probability of A fails is equal to 0 0.2. Probability of B fails alone. That implies A does not fail and B fails is equal to 0 0.15 and probability of A and B fail is equal to 0 0.15 so if we add second and third equation using Total probability theorem, we can say probability of B fails is equal to 0 0.3. So the probability of A fails alone So the probability of A fails given that B fails can be form as we know probability of A intersection of B and probability of B. We'll get this value as 0 0.5 as 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.2. So we need to find the value of probability of A fails along that is the probability of A union. So we if we use the total probability theorem we can say probability of K is equal to probability of A intersection B plus probability of A intersection B. So we know the value of probability of A and probability of A intersection B. So we can find the value of probability of A intersection not B which is equal to probability of A fails alone. So we go to the next question. A bag one contains three red and four black. Bag two contains four red and five black. One ball is transferred from bag one to two. Then a ball is drawn from back to the ball is found to be red in color find the property that the transfer ball is black okay so again let us define the value at a be the events such that the ball is red and even be the event of transferring a red ball from bag one to two and e to be the event of transferring black ball from bag one to two. So we have to find the probability such that this the black ball transfer and the So this can be found using the base theorem. So first we have to find the value of probability of A given E1 and probability of A 
given E2. So the probability of red ball, if a ball, if a red ball is transferred to from bat two to one, then the probability of red ball can is equal to pi by ten since a additional red ball is transferred. If a black ball is transferred, the probability will be four by ten. Since the additional ball is black. So now we can use to, now we can use Bayes theorem to find the value of P of E2 given A. So we go to the next question. If A and B are two events such that probability A not equal to zero and probability of B given A is equal to one. Okay. So it is given probability of A, sorry, B given A is equal to 1. This implies probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A. So this is only possible when A is subset of B. Since the probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A. So the correct option will be option A. So the next question, probability of a given B greater than probability of B. Okay. It is given that probability of so let's where is this? Probability of A. Given B greater than probability of A. So probability of A intersection B. The probability of B greater than probability of A. Okay, so now we can change the value of probability A and B. So probability of A by B by A rather than probability of B. This is equal to probability of B by A is greater than probability of B. This is the third option. So we we'll move to the next question. If A and B are any two events such that probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B is equal to probability of A. Okay. It is given the probability of A plus Probability of B minus probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A. So this is the left hand side is equal to the probability of A intersection B. So we can say probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A. And also if you see the above part, if we cancel the probability of A and probability of A, 
we'll get probability of b is equal to probability of a intersection b and we'll get one is equal to probability of a intersection b by probability of b this is equal to conditional probability of a given that b have done so this is the second option option b is correct so now we have completed the exercises in the probability chapter